Uh, you can see a lot of familiar faces. Great to see you guys again. Uh, today I'm joined with uh, Jeff and Dennis from Actual Architecture. Uh, and we together, uh, they're our local partners here in Omaha. Uh, we're an architecture and design office based in Brooklyn. Uh, and together we're, we're really excited to, to show you everything that we've been working on. Um, so uh, for those of you who have uh, been to our, uh, the previous meetings, uh, we, we talked uh, a lot about community. Uh, and we, we really think that the, at the heart of this project, or at the core of this project, really is uh, community. Um, and so uh, we, we had a series of uh, meetings with uh, artists uh, and uh, other creatives, and we, we really wanted to understand uh, what this building needed to be uh, to make it work for them. Uh, what, what it would mean uh, also for the community at large. Uh, and uh, North Omaha uh, as, a, as a neighborhood. Uh, we, we brought a lot of ideas. We, we brought ideas of, uh, of how, how the living spaces and the working spaces and the optimal relationships between them, uh, the character of the public facing parts of the project, uh, because that, that in the end is actually uh, a very important part uh, of this project to us. And what, what's unique about this project is the live work community uh, that, that we have the opportunity to create. Uh, we have the opportunity to gather uh, a group of residents, uh, creatives dedicated to both their craft uh, and the neighborhood. Uh, we, uh, and we received uh, a, lot of, a lot of great feedback. And so we, we saw this project we saw this project uh, as bigger than just a building. Uh, our, our meetings uh, showed us that uh, this will be a piece uh, to the overall revitalization uh, of the area and, and the creation of uh, the uh, uh, cultural arts uh, section in the neighborhood. And to that end, we, we, we think that this is really a component of, of a larger cultural campus uh, at 24th and Lake. Uh, it's a campus that, that also uh, includes the Great Plains Bath History Museum, uh, the Showcase, uh, and the Union uh, right at the corner. Uh, so we, we, I, I mentioned that public spaces and the public facing part of this project uh, was extremely important, and we, we really uh, believe uh, that the, the bringing together of a community goes beyond the creation of buildings, and that we really need to create spaces that, that foster interaction, uh, that allow, you know, for example, uh, uh, street, uh, street performances of, of musicians, and just you know, having, having the sound uh, of the music just attract people and bring them uh, uh, to, the, to the project. And, and in a sense, it, it really gives life. Uh, and, and we think that this is, this is really what the beauty of the project is, is that we have an opportunity to, to bring life uh, here and on this corner uh, around this campus. Uh, we, we had a series of surveys uh, in addition to these meetings, and, and uh, this response uh, to one of the surveys really resonated with us, uh, especially this idea of a heart. Uh, we saw this as a cultural heart at 24th and Lake that, that should be beating with, with life and, and flowing with exchange between uh, artists uh, and, and the neighborhood. And looking at the union uh, for inspiration, we were, we were drawn we were drawn to the fact uh, that, that there's, there's this collection of buildings uh, that, that are tied together with these new public spaces. Um, and the blue is the, the glazed atrium that's right outside the room here. Uh, and, uh, and then the orange is this uh, public, uh, this, this courtyard between the showcase uh, and the union. And you know, it, it's, we, we saw this as sort of a campus already in the making. And we, we felt this had the seeds uh, for a project where the spaces between the buildings became as important as the buildings themselves. Uh, combined with a, a, an effort to, to respect the scale of the neighboring buildings, you have the, the showcase here and the uh, former Great Plains Black History Museum here, uh, that we imagine this project becoming two volumes uh, rather than just one large, one large building. And those are the two volumes here. And we imagine that there, there's a continuation of these public spaces uh, that occur between, between the buildings on the site. 
uh, keeping artists in mind, uh, we, we studied the sun path uh, and the orientations, uh, and we decided to, to very slightly angle in the facades to, to really capture uh, the daylight uh, that's really important to, to artists, uh, and we think make uh, beautiful living spaces. Uh, we also... We also looked at the approaches, uh, the approach from, uh, from the car on Lake Street and the approach of walking on Lake Street. And we, we wanted to, to create a, a series of, of um, to, to promote this idea of creating public spaces. We, we angled off the buildings uh, and we didn't directly, we didn't very visually tie them uh, to the buildings. We thought that the buildings uh, had to, as a campus, uh, would be would be related to one another, but not necessarily um, exactly attached uh, to one another. Uh, looking at uh, further, a little more uh, nuanced approach, um, you know, the, how the residents and the artists enter from a parking lot from the south, uh, and how someone who might be visiting the Union uh, approach, uh, approach the project, we, we felt that you know, the, the buildings themselves, the volumes, had to, had to have a sense of, of welcoming. And so we, we further we pulled out parts of the facade to to create uh, what we think is a is a funnel that that basically attracts people uh, to the space between the buildings. Uh, looking at the the project on Lake Street, um, we we saw that uh, these these buildings we, we wanted to to get the scale uh, to be to be I guess uh, for lack of a better word. Uh, have it fit with the existing building. We, we recognize the, the heritage, and there's great heritage in the showcase uh, as, a, as a music venue, and there's uh, and, you know, the uh, Webster Exchange Building and the Great Plains Fact History Museum speaks for itself. Uh, so we, we thought that the buildings uh, would, would relate to them in, in scale. Uh, we're proposing two volumes, uh, or two buildings, one that's shorter, that's related to the showcase, and one that's taller, and that's uh, related to the uh, or the Webster Exchange building, and uh, we we joked about this in, in the office about how this is this is a little bit like jazz in the elevation the uh, the, the rhythm of the heights of the buildings uh, sort of uh, work with one another but are are at the same time different and, and we, uh, we we like that we like that analogy. Uh, we also looked again at the, at the public spaces or the in-between spaces uh, between these buildings and, and how they're related to one another. Uh, we have the union here, uh, the, the space between uh, the, the union and the showcase, uh, and then also the spaces between those buildings uh, and the new one. Uh, and you can see uh, this might be a better representation of it, the, the sort of spaces that, these outdoor spaces that Uh, these outdoor spaces form form a network uh, that weave in and between the buildings that, that really create this uh, sense of the campus. Uh, we also uh, wanted to uh, maximize the use uh, of the showcase, and we thought a really great way to do that uh, was to um, create a, a green roof uh, on top of the showcase. Uh, we think that that's, that that creates a nice outdoor amenity for the residents uh, as well. Um, as a potential platform for art to be viewed uh, from the street. You can imagine an artist with a, um, a large enough sculpture uh, that's on, on the roof of the showcase that, that's, that can be visible from, uh, from Lake Street. Uh, Jeff will talk you through uh, the, the technical parts, the cool parts, uh, how this building's all gonna come together. Uh, yeah, so you know, this building uh, is innovative in a number of ways. And one of them is the way we're, we're proposing to build it using a system called cross-laminated timber, which uh, is uh, relatively new in the United States. It's actually a common way of building in Europe. Um, but as you can see, cross-laminated timber uses uh, timber pieces put together in big slabs. So as you can see, oh, sorry, both <laughs> So you can see the layers of, of timber put together in this big slab, and then the slabs are fabricated in a factory and then brought to the site. And what this does for us is a couple of things. It lets us build a building that is 
in a way like an industrial building that it's made out of repeated um, uh, elements that are very easy to assemble. But it's wood, so it's warm and pleasant and, and very nice to be around. And what's great about this is that you don't have to um, finish. Yeah, I don't this. Yeah, there you go. Um, you don't have to finish the interior with a drywall or paint or anything. You let it be what it is, which is a really great opportunity for us to uh, to create a, an environment that's warm and friendly, but rough and ready for artists to inhabit. The floors, in this case, will actually have concrete on them, so it'll be a, a workable surface for an artist doing a lot of different kinds of, of, of work. Um, but the walls and the, the structure and the ceiling above uh, will be uh, this timber. Um, so the, uh, this piece here is an, an artwork by Sheila Hicks, and Sheila is uh, an internationally known artist from Nebraska, uh, works in fiber primarily. Um, and what's really interesting about this piece for us is the way uh, the repeated elements of the piece come together, um, the, the fibers, and then the, the gray fibers at the core um, uh, as a structure uh, become the sort of framework for the, the piece. And then it is sort of amended with these colored threads that start to give it life. And so we think of this as a, a metaphor for the building in that we have a, a simple structure of repeated elements that takes on life because of the work that the artists are doing, uh, inhabiting the building itself. So this is a, a representation of the structure of the building, sort of the main core. Um, and one of the things that we're really uh, starting to look at here is the, the fact that the artist, and this quote is from one of the survey uh, responses uh, during our initial process in the fall, that the artists are really interested in having indoor space but also access to outdoor space. Uh, and, and that's challenging on multiple floors. So what we're looking at is, a, is pulling the framework for the building <coughs> out from the interior uh, to frame a sort of scaffold around the spaces. And then uh, to sort of infill that scaffold with, with, with platforms that artists can use for outdoor balconies where the artists can actually start to, to go out and start to work, um, display their work, or just inhabit. Uh, and then to sort of veil the whole building in a translucent um, metal skin that allows uh, a sense of transparency, uh, but also a sense of you know, where the private realm is. So it becomes a sort of permeable surface on the building, as you'll see it in the upcoming um, And then to start to bring that down into the ground plane, the, the surface of the, of the uh, site is, uh, is paved. There's some green space, there's also some paved areas. And then there's a canopy that comes down between the two buildings. It'll be illuminated, but also allow us to bring shade material in there to make the outdoor space more pleasant in, in the summer months. Uh, so as you can see in this section, cut through the taller of the two buildings, um, starting to show all the life that's going on in here. The ground floor uh, of both buildings is going to be a commercial space, but also shared workspace for artists, so large shared studios. And then the other floors are alternating studio space and residential space. So in this particular building, the second floor is all studio space, and then third and fourth are residential apartments, and then studio space again at the upper level where we can take advantage of light, uh, light monitors uh, up above to bring north light in. So we're creating different kinds of environments for artists. Some artists will want more natural light, and they might gravitate towards the spaces on the upper level. Some artists may not need as much natural light or want to control the light more directly and we might opt for some of these other floors. The other thing that is shown here in this part of the image is a large common area. So one of the other issues that came out in our conversation with artists was the desire for community between the artists. And so we see this building as a framework that forms that community by providing public space outdoors that is really open to anybody and then indoor communal spaces that are for the artists who are inhabiting and working in the building where they can actually get together and talk about their work or, or even start to work together on projects. So this idea of being artists being able to come here to have a community of artists is fundamental to this project. It's really why this project exists. It's about bringing artists together to work together in the same environment. Um, so I'll kind of run through the, the <coughs> plans fairly quickly just to give you a sense of how this lays out. Um, the far left here is the showcase building. Um, that's this here. Uh, and then the three-story building, and then the five-story building, and then the Webster Exchange over here with the courtyard between. There's a, a corridor that runs through all of these buildings that actually connects across from an access way into the union. So it provides the artists and the inhabitants in the building a way to move through all the spaces to cut across uh, the sort of grain of the building. 
Uh, the, the showcase building will be renovated, uh, but still function as a lounge and, and maybe a music venue, possibly with a recording studio in the back area. Uh, the, the sort of three-story building here would have a tenant space in the front that could be split into multiple tenant spaces or one large tenant space. Could be a restaurant, could be a gallery, could be a combination thereof. Uh, and then the, the southern part of that building is a shared studio that'll be uh, equipped for the artist to use you know, heavier uh, equipment, less such as welding, maybe a paint booth could be installed in there and it'd be fireproof for, for those kinds of functions. Then the neighboring building um, has a tenant space over here that might potentially connect to the Webster Exchange one day, uh, another sort of access corridor, and then shared studio space as well. And you can see the stairs and elevators uh, going into the upper levels. Um, in, uh, on the next level of the three-story building, you're seeing a range of different apartment types, and we'll talk about those in more detail in a minute, but everything from an efficiency apartment that's just really a small space with uh, you know, a bathroom, kitchenette, and a, and a place for a bed, uh, to larger spaces like two-bedroom or one-bedroom apartments. Uh, this shows a studio floor where the studios are uh, ranged, also range in size from maybe a 300 square foot studio to, to closer to 400 square, 500 square feet even. Um, and those are also equipped with very minimal kitchenettes and bathrooms so that they can actually function as residences. So someone may rent that space to use as a studio, maybe they want to stay there sometimes during the week and that's possible. Uh, they'd actually build legally as residences in that sense. Um, then the next floor, um, you can see how on this side you have a studio now on the third floor with some maybe some smaller studio spaces that would allow a musician just to use it for practice. They may not need a lot of space. Uh, and then on the other building, more apartments. The way this building is designed is so that we can adjust the size of those studios as we develop this more uh, in more detail. So we may find that the majority of artists want smaller spaces, we can subdivide it more, or if we find that the artists are looking for larger spaces, we can open them up a little bit more. So the framework allows for that kind of flexibility. Same with the apartments. So here's uh, a couple of floor plans for apartments. This is one of the efficiency units. You sort of see the, the bathroom, kitchen, sort of sleeping area, living area, all kind of combined into one sort of uh, ranging from 360 to 390 square feet. And then a one bedroom apartment ranging from 520 to 620 square feet using three of the bays of our building. And then uh, uh, this is a larger one, um, you know, it's, it's as large as 870 square feet with two bedrooms, but that could also be used as a bedroom and workspace depending on who's speaking to you. Um, but um, access to water uh, and, and so on, these are all things that we're trying to provide for the artist. So, um, in the studios, you're going to have, as I mentioned, the very minimal sort of kitchenette and bathroom in each studio, which allows the artists to, uh, to, to do most, most things the artists are going to want to work on in terms of production, but they could also live in one of those spaces as well. So Danny's going to kind of take over and talk about some of the, the sort of character of the building. So we, when, when we were making the images uh, for this, uh, for this to, to try to communicate what, what we think is, is really the, the essence of this project. Uh, we, we flew around the building the, in the 3D model and, and we, we sort of gravitated towards uh, this view where we're floating between the two buildings and looking down on it. What we, what we think uh, this shows is, is that idea that this building really is a scaffold uh, for life to unfold uh, within it. Um, Jeff mentioned that there, there's a transparency to the veil uh, that we're trying to achieve, uh, and we, 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 we're, um, we're, we're designing it with uh, a lot of uh, windows and glazing uh, to allow light in. And w what, that, what that allows us to do as well, or what the project allows the project to do, is, is really show uh, the personality uh, and the character of the people inhabiting it. So, you know, whether you choose uh, pink curtains or blue curtains or no curtains at all, uh, the plants that you decide to leave out, all of those, all of those everyday uh, little things that, that sort of add up to, to what is you know, a, 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 the life of a person, we think is, is really worth uh, showing. Um, you know, whether it's messy or whether it's neat, we, we think all of that is, is great. Uh, and then in the, in the courtyard, uh, between them, uh, we, we also see this as a place where, where art can occur, uh, where you know, someone, someone who, who's feeling inspired can, can start drawing on the, uh, on the, on the uh, stone pavers 
or you know someone who needs a little more space to, to work on their uh, to work on their uh, giant balloon uh, can can have a space to do that. And we we thought that this this really captured that that sort of uh, that feeling uh, that that we wanted to, to the project to have. And you know we 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 think that. In, in showing this, the all the small things of everyday life, that it really does reflect the culture uh, and the and the community, and we think that's that's really great. Uh, this is a, a rendered view from uh, from Lake Street. Uh, we also uh, we have a closer up version here, but we we think that it, it really. <laughs> All right. We think that this this captures the idea uh, of a campus, uh, where you can see that you know it's the Black uh, the Great Plains Black History Museum, uh, or sorry Webster Exchange Building, uh, and the space that you can you can head behind it, uh, behind the new building, come through this uh, come through this courtyard and, and see people working, see people see people playing music, uh, find out what color curtains your neighbors have. Uh, come around the front uh, and see, you know, we uh, the tenant space of the shorter building, and, and perhaps the the showcase uh, continuing uh, to be a music venue, uh, and and then wrapping around that uh, and, and entering this uh, this courtyard here, right outside this room, uh, and uh, we we didn't uh, we took some artistic liberties and assumed that a mural would be painted on this wall. Uh, we haven't run that by Brigitte yet or her team, but. We hope she's uh, she's amenable to that, um, and so uh, we we really think that this has the opportunity to to to, to give to, to bring life out uh, on Twenty Fourth and Lake. Uh, this is a, a closer view, and so so the, this idea of the the transparency we we really hope someone. Uh, th this idea of a scaffold also, uh, we, we really like this idea that someone plants some vines and, and that the vines also take a life of their own and add uh, something to, uh, to the building as a whole. Uh, we also understand that uh, the creative process doesn't stop uh, when the, the sun goes down uh, and we, the, the life of this building at night uh, is also extremely important, uh, we think, to this project. And this is this is where um, the the personalities uh, and the character of the people that are living there uh, have a chance to also um, be a beacon, uh, a lantern almost uh, for uh, for Twenty Fourth and Lake. Um, Jeff mentioned that we had a canopy between the two buildings, and we think that this canopy can serve as a as a lighting element uh, that 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 really. Uh, brings uh, that brings to to life the the space between the two buildings uh, even after hours. This is the the approach uh, from the east side on Lake Street. Uh, and this is standing in the courtyard. Uh, so uh, in the model, this, this is an image of standing between the two buildings and looking towards, uh, towards the west, looking towards the showcase. Uh, and so what we have is the fully glazed uh, ground floor uh, that we imagine could possibly be a restaurant. Uh, and that's, that's tied and connected to the showcase. And that's, that's the yellow brick uh, that you see beyond there. Uh, this is uh, one of the artist studios on the top levels. Uh, you, you can see the the, the wood structure um, that's exposed uh, and the skylights uh, that that are above uh, that give that that really nice diffuse uh, northern northern light. And uh, uh, Jeff mentioned that you know we 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 also <laughs> consider uh, communal working spaces and that that the camaraderie between artists uh, really fuels each other. And so we wanted to create spaces that, uh, that, that would facilitate that. And uh, we, 
you know, this, this is an example of, of that uh, ground floor shared gallery space. Uh, Celeste, we were, I, I saw Celeste earlier. Uh, okay. uh, we added you in there. Yeah, we, we, thought, we thought you would be, you'd be the first to sign up. So. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll open it up for questions, but before we get to questions, I think I want to address something that will probably come up. One, this is still in the concept stage, okay? What we want to do is bring it back to the community, get additional input. Are we on the right track? If there's some other suggestions or ideas or thoughts. Uh, process after we wrap this up in the next 30 days. Uh, uh, then we'll look to figure out how we raise money to make this happen, if that's the way we go. So. With that, if there are questions to professionals, somebody's got it. Um, I just have a quick question about, I know you were talking about um, the different levels having studio space on each level, and then have you considered, um, or, I mean, I'm probably sure you have thought about this, but since you have different living spaces on different levels and different um, studio spaces on different levels, people working at different times and sleeping at different times, and so, how does that look where the studio spaces are going to be located in reference to where people are going to be sleeping? So how does that Well, the, uh, one of the things that came out of our public meetings was the desire for artists to have their studios together, but they didn't necessarily want their living space to be immediately adjacent to the studio. And the way we solved that was to separate living and working into different levels. So when you're on a floor of studios, it's all studios, and then the floor above or below might be an apartment floor. Not that someone couldn't sleep in one of the studios if they wanted, that's certainly a possibility. Um, but, but one of the thoughts was uh, that, you know, if, say you had an open studio day and the building is open to visitors, the visitors would only have access to the studio floors, not the residential floors. So it's a way of maintaining privacy. But the way the building is built, there's concrete floors, there's thick wood slabs, so it's very, isolated acoustically, um, so that you're not going to have a lot of noise from you know, up above, down below, and okay. so on. And that's, we don't know who's going to be there, what they're going to be doing, and so right. we're trying to make sure it works for, for everybody. Yeah. Of the few public meetings I've been at, I never recall any of the suggestions being residential in that area, not once. There was a lot of conversation about forming art center, and of course, maybe an extension of the museum which is not there, by the way. Our future plans were to expand over to the region about directly west of the building there. Some type of performing arts center, maybe a 400 seat auditorium. So my question is, number one, where are all these artists coming from? Where are they coming from? I mean, you've got, the, you've got this facility, right? I don't know where all these artists are coming from. Can you tell me? Well, there's a lot of artists in Omaha. No? Let me name Let me name from, from day one, this was always uh, uh, promoted as an artist live workspace. Now, you might have missed that meeting, but that's, that's how we promoted it. Uh, secondly, uh, because of the fact this area, this area was targeted through a series of, 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 of uh, community meetings when we did the North Omaha Revitalization Plan, this area was designated as the Art, Entertainment, Cultural District. Uh, we're trying to stay true to that, and that came out of community input over, over the years. Secondly, we believe that they are art, but until we we won't want the construction until we've done, done a little bit more. That, like I said, this is a concept design. Mm -hmm. We have to do some other homework after this to determine. And just because it uh, it, it, it it may be primarily geared toward artists, if all of a sudden there's three uh, units and nobody's rent, I mean no artists are renting them, they can rent it to any to any uh, non artist Artisan. So what I'm thinking is the artists that you're talking about going into this facility are not just from the traditional North Omaha area. You're talking about the entire city, it's right? Sir, if I could, I'm sorry, I'm back here. Um, so this is the fourth of a series of meetings that we've had around this project. Uh, project. The first meeting was a community-wide meeting that we had on the site, and the two meetings that happened after that were focused on artists sort of asking them what they needed to make this space viable for them. And I would say at those meetings, we probably had 15 to 20, and I see a lot of faces here tonight that were at those meetings, 15 to 20 artists 
from the community, African American artists who were interested in being able to move back here who had to leave because there wasn't infrastructure for them. So we do believe that the artists are here. They were attending the other meetings and some of them were able to join us here this evening. Well, how many artists do you anticipate occupying this building? Artists and residential. We have, in the current configuration, as I mentioned, there's ways of expanding and contracting the numbers inside the framework of the building, but we have about 39 units in apartments and studios. So that might be, uh, some of those may just be used as studios and the artists may not live there, they might live elsewhere. We had some people coming to the sessions who, maybe they had a great place to live, but they really wanted a place to work with other artists. One last so, question, I'm not going to take up yeah. a lot of time. Other communities such as Dundee, Vincent, incorporate the architecture of the area into what they do. Here we've got a 2000 and something concept next to a historic building. It goes back to the 19, early 1900s. Um, I, I, personally, I, I'm not enthused about the design of this. Uh, other people may feel it different. I think the community really needs to perform a large area uh, instead of housing residential. I don't know how many people would want to live right on 24th and Lake Street. Uh, I know that the, the project down the street that faces 24th has a bit on that popular. You mentioned in the restaurant. Well, we just had a restaurant closed. So, you know, I'm just kind of hesitant to. I think that's kind of the point, though. It's like to bring this here so people come here and want to stay here. Like, you ask, like, why does somebody want to live on 24th and Lake? I think the point of the whole project is to bring the arts to 24th and Lake, bring residents in so people can live here if they'd like to, but also just come here and hang out if they'd like to. I think that's the point of the whole thing. Like, we can't just decide we can't move here because it just started. You know, it has to start somewhere and then build from that point. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Mike. My, my question. Um, my, my question is directed at Mike. Uh, it, 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 um, I understand what they're talking about as far as the, the newness of the buildings and placing them between the showcase and uh, you've already renamed. It's hard to get the new name out of the Great Back the Great Plains Black Museum. But there was a trigger thing that you said right in the beginning, and I, I'm still talking just to Mike, but the, you mentioned how it, in the development of this, you were trying to um, get the understanding of the culture. That's why the one that you had with the park outside when we first, when it first came together and we're out, and you had everybody sectioned around, and you had a section that was getting the feeling of the cultural piece. And uh, we made sure that we informed them of the real traditional cultural piece, which was predicated out of the 1913 segregation laws of Omaha, which created this corridor, implemented by the Hebraic Jew population, who at that time would still be perceived as black because they were black. And that's why the African Americans could come into here as commerce, not as developers, but as commerce. The Empowerment Network Saturday had a meeting dealing with the housing situations in Omaha, Nebraska. And the statistics were deplorable, the worst in the country as far as black home ownership in this area. In the development of the land bank program, 85% of the rules and the regulations in order to qualify to buy these land banks almost totally disqualify the majority of the population that live here, i.e. it's better to have no credit than bad credit. There, there needs to be a, uh, a discussion with the community about the real historical trappings as opposed to those that, that have been taken over by the outside community identifying what our culture is and our culture is not just in jazz it's not just in jazz uh, that and when you have this kind of setting it's very difficult because this is this is this is a beautiful layout this is fine what oedc has done purchasing the property giving it doing the development here but 
for those that us to seize it, uh, it's not very likely that the significance of it is going to apply to us if for no other reason then one of the major problems we have here is that the younger African Americans have already moved out of this town because they see no nothing here to aid them in developing here. Those are the kinds of issues that I came. I, I, I knew that you'd have a great everything that OEDC does. Everything is laid out. Everything they do is beautiful. We understand that you have to collaborate with certain other individuals, but a lot of us aren't that assured that their intent is above board. And to have us come in and participate in this is a reluctancy to criticize because the criticism is not based upon what we're seeing. The criticism is based upon what we have felt. And we haven't experienced any type of real collaboration since this town was purposely segregated to lock black people into a place where we had to develop our own culture. Now that we're going to turn around and let the culture, and the culture is not art, the culture was music. We had artists, but it was music. But even the concept of jazz is an overriding because we had music. We had all forms of music. And that's, that just makes things very difficult. There, there's no, I personally don't have that kind of trust in the outside factors that you've been able to collaborate with. I have a great amount of trust for OEDC because what has happened and, and viewed uh, is, is, is obvious. But there's still something very seriously wrong in this picture. Something serious wrong in this picture. Okay, I'm not sure exactly what, what, what it is. From the only thing I can say is, that, and, and you might do not go way back, uh, I've, I've been in the community all my life. I've spent 49 years working in this community. Got a few more to go. Uh, and in my whole heart, and so has been in this community. I'm not always right. Sometimes I make mistakes, and sometimes I'm wrong. But I, but I, but I'm stable, and I, and, 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 and I stay here. Uh, we think that what we're proposing, or what's being proposed, uh, is an extension of development of this community, hoping to keep younger people here in the community. Got to, got. If we don't have things to attract them or, or, or appeal to them, then they will be gone. And I know that as well as anybody, because I got two daughters. They both left, and now neither one of them coming back. Uh, so, I, I understand what you're saying. I'm going to do all I can to ensure that this is, and this project is not for artisans. It's really for the community. It just happens to focus on artisans at this point in time. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I don't know, we don't know right now who's going to take it, but if we don't put something out there, there won't be nothing to take. <laughs> so, it's just another step in trying, in trying to develop it. Uh, all I can say is that I'll do all I can to make sure that it's for the community and by the community. That's why we have these public meetings to get that, to get that input. Just a couple of comments. Uh, to expand on what you were saying, who's going to own these units? You know, are they going to be are they going to be co-ops? No, that, o o OEDC will develop and own yeah. the, the, the facility. So there won't be any yeah, generational wealth created. Not in this project, every project is not going to be generational. Okay. Uh, well, wealth. I mean, some projects will that, just appeal yeah. to, to, to and everybody doesn't want to own either yeah. at, at well, this stage. But I mean, but, but I mean, if I'm a young twenty-two year old artist and I'm going to cast my lot to spend twenty years of my life in Omaha, I, I'm. You know, I'm creating my world there, right? I'm, I'm, I'm paying what I could be paying a mortgage someplace else. I mean, creating. Well, that, 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 yeah, I mean, that's we options. we cannot solve every problem for everybody. Right. This is going to solve a problem for some people. Right. But my <laughs> my other comment was in the building itself. Uh, I'm new to Omaha. I just, I just, I, but it's amazing how cold the wind is here in the winter time. And the fact that there's really no easy way for people to get between the two buildings and up just going out in a minus 20 wind chill. I think that's a design issue that you guys could take up a glass corridor between the two buildings, maybe, or a seasonal corridor between the two buildings. Um, the other thing is, my wife's an artist, and uh, our house smells like God knows what kind of chemicals a, a lot of the time. Whether she's doing oils, the house smells like linseed and turpentine. Uh, I didn't see any sort of waste disposal, any ventilation, 
any special ha air handling <clears throat> for the studios to make the living spaces safer and healthier and the public spaces safer and healthier from, you know, you know what happens when they get into fiberglass one day and the whole place smells like carbon resin or lacquer finish or you know, lacquer remover. I mean, there's a lot of overhead and in these kind of things that, you know, well, just to, just to answer that question, we, um, we don't believe that someone could pour resin in every single unit in the building. You would in one, it smelled everywhere. Right. So and the other one was the full, finally was, I didn't see any elevators. There's elevators in both buildings. Okay, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't see them in the Yeah, they're, uh, they, were in, they don't necessarily show up okay. in those views, but there's, yeah. yeah, there's elevators in both buildings, and they're going to be large, fairly large elevators that would, uh, Accommodate, you know, larger Rolling things that are super in and out. Hard well, there's no but yeah, one of the thoughts was that the ground floor studios, and one of them would be prepared for the really heavy stuff that might involve you know, really fume generating materials, and it would be ventilated in that way. And there's also one place that would be where you could weld or do, you know, heavy duty metal work. You wouldn't do that in the in your own private studio. It's just, I mean, just, just an oil studio time. where it's got turpentine and linseed yeah. oil. You know. So it's going to depend on what people do. And some of the studios might have better ventilation than others. And if there's someone's an oil painter, they might take one of those versus a musician who doesn't really yeah. need special ventilation. All the units, regardless, have outdoor uh, large <coughs> doors to open up and get a lot of natural ventilation uh, when they need it. When I come to these meetings that have to do with development of area, uh, areas in North Omaha, I don't recall ever seeing a person of color in the development stage like you three. Never. And particularly a person of color who lives in the area, I've never seen that before. It's always an outside group that comes in with these plans. Uh, and let me respond to that. Yeah. We had, we, we, because of the nature of the funding that we got, we had to do, we, we did a national search for our, we put it out nationally and locally. Mm -hmm. We had about five or six respondents, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and we selected what we thought was the best of those respondents that we had, okay? okay? Now, you, you know as well as I do, there's no black architectural firm in Omaha, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, but we put a national RFP out, okay? Okay. If I can say it. What is the total cost of this project? That's my last question. Uh, that's the next step. Uh, I'm sorry? So, that, so uh, we, we now have a, a concept design that we're looking for. How much is this cost so far? Uh, we, that, that's the next step. We have to, we're now going to dig into the numbers uh, to really get a sense of how, how much is this cost so far. Well, well, again, I don't know why you're asking that question, Jim, uh, because the National Endowment for the Arts and the Local Fund to help finance, finance this project. Okay. Okay. You know, it is what it is. Okay. How much you cost, that's the way you need to see Okay. In terms of just, um, national models you know, that, that really make the case for something like this. Have you looked at similar urban areas across the country and, and talk a little bit about their successes and their sustainability strategies? Because mostly, you know, I'm an artist and most artists I know are starving artists. They do what it takes uh, to really um, spend the time in terms of their, their gift. So talk a little bit about that, but more importantly in terms of what is some national um, models that's out there in urban areas similar to Omaha? Uh, sure. Um, so uh, one, one of the first things that we did was uh, exactly ask that question is what, what are the models that are, that are already happening uh, across the country. Um, and we found one in Seattle. Uh, it's called the uh, Sunset Studios, if I remember correctly. It, it was it's set in a, a formerly industrial part of, uh, of Seattle. Uh, and uh, like a lot of industrial parts of cities, um, there was uh, a lot of economic you know, flight uh, in the area. And um, the, the, a group uh, decided to, to purchase a building and create a, artist studios um, that had very similar programming to what we imagine uh, happening here. So they're um, uh, 
they, they didn't particularly have uh, live in studios, but what they, what they did have was a, a whole slew of programs that, that, that worked with local artists uh, that uh, hosted and facilitated open studios uh, so that it's not, it's not just uh, about the, the creation uh, of the art, but also about the commerce of art. Um, and the support that that, that building has brought the artists there uh, has uh, so far, um, uh, we think, uh, been successful. Uh, they're still around and they're still thriving. Uh, and for the area as a whole, uh, the um, you know, artists artists are people too, and artists need uh, have have basic human needs. And so, it, they were able to create a density of people in the area that started drawing in. Um, Coffee shops that started drawing in, uh, that started drawing in restaurants, um, and I, I think uh, one uh, one of the artists uh, uh, opened a, a uh, or uh, opened a, um, an art supply store, and so I mean, these, these sort of uh, related uh, businesses that, that that started coming in uh, really helped this area uh, thrive, and so. That, that gave us hope that this, this was going to work here also. My question is uh, related to the showcase building. When you were showing the renderings, you had um, artist activity on top of the showcase building. Um, that would probably be my main area of concern because mm -hmm. of the identity of that building and then um, there's a lot of changes happening. We have to work real, really hard for the art and culture and entertainment district. And the showcase is going to be a really key part, just like this artist live workspace. I think this is going to be uh, an important part of the revitalization and once again, like you said, engaging this area. My only concern would be that the showcase is very, very important to a lot of people and the historic context I would hate to see um, um, a conflict in the community um, if it were viewed as the artists having command of that space as well, to have a very clear distinction. I'm excited about the idea of the ceiling, of the roof, roof ceiling, the roof being engaged. I'm hearing some great music up on that roof. But that would be, when I saw that, that was my concern. Mm -hmm. That's, that's an interesting point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I come from an interior design background, and uh, one thing that we always talk about is that form follows function. And so when you're looking at your drawings and the function for this area, we haven't quite got to it yet because the main part of need in this area is always opportunities for uh, economic advancement. Now, if you bring in an artist, you've got a lot of space here, and there is no educational unit for people here. This is like an artist coming in. It's hard to sell art. You can be successful at it. They could use their talents as well to train other people what they do. They can make money themselves and they at the same time train other people to go out and do what they do. So I really think that educational, you know, we have, we've got singers, we have a studio for people to teach singing, teach piano, all those are arts. And I just feel that there's a need for us. I agree with that. Kind of to piggyback off the last two comments, actually, um, first of all, I, I want to say that I love the design. I, I love uh, the wood and the concrete idea of this building. I think it's great. Um, I'm interested in living in one of these spaces as an, as an artist. Uh, definitely, I probably would need more space than the square footage that you mentioned, but um, I, I like the idea of, of uh, live workspace. Um, will this be affordable for artists? First of all, uh, there's a unit in Council Bluffs that's also an artist loft that has lowered rates in order to be able to, to stay there. It's one of my questions. Um, I didn't see anything about parking, and um, it, will there be any kind of parking, covered parking? Uh, winter times get pretty brutal. Um, also, it seems like you designed 
the uh, buildings around visual arts mostly. And I'm really concerned about, uh, my, my idea <clears throat> has always been to revitalize the musical aspect of, um, of this area. My great grandfather is Paul Beyond, a senior who owned the showcase years ago. And, and so that is a big, um, big deal for me to, to bring music into this, the scene and not just playing music, not just showcasing music, but also teaching music, uh, music lessons, uh, places, places for that. Um, so I, I, I was thinking in the construction of, of the building, it seems that it's more geared towards light, more geared towards visual, not really geared, geared so much towards musical. If I, if I am an artist that wants to live there in that space, I'm definitely going to be making a lot of noise. Um, I, built, I used to build recording studios in LA growing up. I see nothing in the architecture right now for soundproofing. Um, having, having a studio where I'm banging away and you know a couple doors down somebody's sleeping might not work. Um, I'm concerned about that as far as the building is concerned because I think myself and a lot of people in the area have, have intentions to really kind of turn this back into a musical community. And I think there might be more musicians than visual artists there, if you ask me about it. Probably wrong about that. Brigitte's done a great job of building the, the, the scene here for visual arts as well. But I know that that, that would personally be uh, something that I would be checking out. So um, because of that, and then also, yeah, the, I have concerns about what, what will happen with the showcase, obviously, just because it, it was in the family at one, at one point. But I do like the rooftop idea. Um, I do like the fact that it, it it's still still wants to be a music venue and even a recording studio. That might be great for the, for the, those efforts as well. Um, but overall, I, I'm, I'm glad something's being done with the area, the project. Uh, uh, I like what you guys, have, I, it feels good what you guys are doing. It seems like you've taken a lot of notes and taken a lot of things in consideration from the community in these meetings and, and, and implemented those things in a, in a great way. And I love the fact that, that um, Mike Maroney's uh, company is involved here and also Brigitte and Union is involved here. So those are two entities in Omaha that I trust a lot and, and so um, I, I'm, I'm leaning towards, yeah, this is a good thing. So if you can address some of those issues I had about the construction, uh, parking, and, and those things, I, I'd love to hear it. Yeah, in terms of the acoustics, we, um, we would build every part of the building to a certain level of acoustical isolation, but then there may be certain areas that are geared more towards musicians that will have additional separation. So double walls between the units and additional acoustic installation. The same way in another space we might handle uh, you know, additional uh, ventilation for toxics and fumes and smelly stuff. Uh, but we won't do all of that everywhere because it would just get too expensive. So one of the things that will happen in the next phase is trying to understand who really might be here and how does that mix work? How many musicians, how many sculptors, how many performance artists and, and so on. And try to understand how much of it needs to really be acoustically uh, enhanced and how much of it maybe needs to be ventilationally enhanced. Let me address that parking issue. Because trust me, we're aware of the lack of parking. Uh, the zoning would not require that there be necessarily a parking lot or anything. Uh, I'm going to ask some of y'all just think back. If you go to uh, Underwood in Dundee, if you go to 49th and a half to 51st Street, that's a block and a half. Go to Benson, go to 59th to, 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 to 63rd, that's about a four block area. At one time they were both dead, and then all of a sudden they had a parking problem. I hope we have a parking problem. Well, that's why I'm there. That means people are here. And, and that's, people what, are that's what we want to ask about. I'd like to just yeah. head and, it and off and the then, And then we'll, we'll get with the same like aspect of South City person and figure out what we do about that parking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see a big lot across the street. Yeah. 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 All the I don't know. I've been to, I've been to shows in the showcase where that lot was full. <laughs> I just got to want to say, man, I think it's a really great project. And I know I was moving to I know at least I think other artists that would as well. The only question is, like, that top floor, like, could that be like Lewis Place? Because I think that'd have a great view downtown. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, would, it would have a great view. And, uh, you know, if it turns out that people want to start living there instead of using it as workspace, it's zoned, it will be internally zoned so they could do that. Um, we're basically building a framework that can be inhabited in different ways. But we were thinking that's a space artists may want to be because they've got this great platform for visual artists, photographers, and so on. But 
it may it may go to the line. Right. Also, the affordability question too is yeah. I really want to get answered if I could. Um, artist affordability, as far as yeah, I, I I think this has been a conversation we've had from the beginning, and you know, a lot of the artists who came to the meetings talked about you know what they could afford and, and what the limits are, and uh, that's something that as we work on the cost of the building, how it's funded, how it's managed, that all has to work out, and uh, it's definitely we, we think of it as attainable artist housing, and that's essential. So at this point, no, sorry to interrupt, uh, no estimates have been made or anything like that for any for the people who are, have a stake in it. Yeah, no, uh, I, I think as, as we kind of understand what cost might be, then we have to figure out how many, how much rental space that we have, at least space that we have, and how much can we really charge? Because there's a, there's a limit to what one can charge, and particularly if you're targeting a, a certain group or a certain area, okay? This will not be high-end rent Units, because we, we know better than that. And if we want to attract the, the folks, particularly from this community or, or those outside the community that want to be in this community, it's got to be an appropriate rent, uh, and that's what we're going to strive to get to. Michael, once again, again, I'm wondering, with this concept so far, there has to be a rough estimate of what this is costing or something. It will be. Is that one yet? Before, before we get to, we wanted to come back to the community. We want to get a little input. They're going to go back and refine some things mm -hmm. based upon what, what, what they hear. They're going to put some estimates together. We're going to use those estimates as, as uh, our basis for figuring out how we, one, uh, uh, how much money we need to raise, how much money we can charge, because we got to figure out what the operating costs are going to be. So we'll know that the rent that we charge will cover the operating costs. So that, we've got six months worth of work to do. Okay. After they get through, before we move forward, I'm guessing between seven and ten million dollars. Could be. Okay. So, um, and I would just like to ask to um, just to, to talk about what this this gentleman up here was speaking about earlier. We did mention um, about um, trying to make these the buildings sort of fit into the landscape a little bit better, and. Um, um, I think when we talked about that, I think that was mentioned that you were that you were looking at using certain types of um, materials to make that happen, and it kind of looks like you abandoned that. Can you speak a little bit to that? Sure. Um, so uh, brick was the first thing, the absolute first thing that that we looked at uh, for the design of this building, and uh, we. Uh, we did a lot of iterations on, on how we can get transparency in brick because that's that's what um, transparency was also a very big uh, part of the, the feedback that we received that there uh, there, there was transparency uh, for for lighting uh, as well as transparency uh, in terms of safety and we, we think that uh, those were, were very valid uh, goals uh, for this project and um, with the you know the brick Brick is a really heavy material, and once once the the, the limitations uh, of brick and getting transparency, uh, where we, we we literally hit a, a brick wall, and we realized that the 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 brick wasn't wasn't getting at the the, the goals of, of transparency uh, that that uh, a lot of the feedback uh, revolved around, and so that's that's when we we started. Moving uh, a little bit away from brick and and really looked at um, uh, uh, materials that, that would allow uh, for that that light to come through that that, that life to to be shown um, and so but we, we we understand uh, the the importance of brick in this area and the the heritage of the uh, structures that are here um, and we uh, right now the design incorporates brick into the courtyards uh, and uh, the courtyards between the two buildings and uh, in front and uh, behind that uh, this uh, brick becomes the material that networks uh, the, the buildings of the campus together. Okay, and one more question about that. Is there a way, and I mean I'm just kind of throwing this out there, but because the front of the building <coughs> seem like really cold and industrial, and so they're kind of, is there a way to incorporate coloring yep. into the fronts of the building so right. maybe they fit a little bit better and they kind of don't seem so cold? Yeah, for sure. Um, so we, we uh, we recognize that as well, uh, and right now it, it might be hard to see uh, the way that it was printed. Uh, the uh, we're, we're looking at, at warmer tones of uh, of metal right now. So there are ways that you can uh, that you can um, 
finished metal uh, so that they, they, they have a warmer tone to them, not necessarily gray, but maybe we, we don't want to say, we've seen champagne or gold, but we, we think that gold is perhaps inappropriate as well. Um, and uh, what we also think would be great is uh, if, you know, some, if someone wanted to, to decorate the balcony uh, or the window themselves, uh, that they are also able to, uh, to express themselves uh, on the building and, and really have the building be, be a tool for, uh, for that self-expression. How far down the road are we talking about? Uh, we we want to do it ASAP. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> it kind of goes back to what uh, David Callaway was asking about cost. We got to figure out what what would cost money, and then where the money's going to come from. It's going to take a while to raise the dollars to get this done. I mean, they had an idea. I hope. I, I guess it'll, if, for me, it, 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 best, it's the best world. Uh, maybe ne next year we can be breaking ground. That's in the, that's in the best world. Safety shelter for those kind of when tornado season and people need to go under, you know, what, what, what do you have for that? That would be in the first floor in, in the corridor areas, would be reinforced so that you would go down to those levels and, uh, and be in those spaces in both buildings. Um, there's no basement level, it just is not cost effective in this, in the soils in this area to do that. So, typically, the way to code works is you reinforce an interior space with masonry and other details to make sure that it's a safe place. So that's a code requirement. We, we do it anyway, but that's just a natural part of it. You, you guys mentioned the showcase um, revitalization. Uh, the, the, I don't want to say Black Plains, Black History Museum. The, the other building, is that the is that also going to be revitalized? Is that, are there any plans going towards that? That's not in these plans? Not in these plans. Uh, but it's still in the overall plan. Well, hopefully it, it, it would be part of the overall long term. I just wanted to reinforce a couple of something that Elijah said and Paul is the whole music scene. You know, one of the things our goal is to really celebrate all forms of African American culture and music. So I'm glad to hear from Brigitte that there's 20 plus African American artists that are interested. And if we can reinforce somebody doing spoken word that can walk across the way and do their thing at loves and you come back home or yeah. jazz or blues or R and B and hip hop and so that yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just, 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 just you know, just, just thinking about some of those the younger generation that is doing the, the spoken word and having an opportunity to live and go down the street and do their deal and then come back, as well as maybe even some African American artists that have relocated to other cities. If they knew this was happening in their own you know community and uh, they can play down you know at one of the venues and walk home or whatever. I just think it you know building on what you've already done. Seems like there's a real opportunity to celebrate the music culture of this district and reflect African American history of the district. Yeah, so we think that I mean, this, we're trying not to make this building work for one particular genre of music or visual art, but just let it be open and let the community decide based on who wants to be there. Right. In terms of the ground floor space is where there's the possibility of building venues. It could be a gallery space for the artists who want to sell their work and they might run it themselves. It might be another music venue in addition to showcase. So all of those are possibilities and we, we want this building to be open to those possibilities. And, and we're coming to you early enough in the process that you know, not, none of, despite the, the sort of finished quality of these images, none of this, none of these ideas, uh, or, or these ideas are all pliable right now. So uh, how we, how we uh, arrange the, the units to accommodate uh, you know, the market of artists that are interested in here, I think we, we still have time and we still have the ability uh, to do that. So thank you. Yes, how you doing? My name is Curly Martin and I'm a jazz musician. And I probably know the history of North Omaha music better than anybody. And so my concern is about that, about the showcase. Uh, because what I want to do is put the instruments back in the young kids' hands in North Omaha, teach them about the history of North Omaha music, teach them about jazz and all genres of music, and especially jazz. Jazz is black classical music, and it needs to be taught. You can't teach a person how to play jazz, but you can open their eyes up and ears to it. And we have a rich history in North Omaha about jazz and blues. People don't even play blues in North Omaha, so I'm trying to bring that back also. But my main thing still is about these children 
and passing on my knowledge, you know, depending on my knowledge, I know around the world, that I can bring to Omaha and help teach these kids here and give them some knowledge. But that's, that's, my, that's the reason I move back to Omaha, to pass on my knowledge. I've been playing 60 years with everybody. So my thing is to pass it on. Like, like I, we had mentors when I was coming up. So that's what I'm trying to do on Omaha, Nebraska. Now, and I'm going to do that. That's, that's what it's about. We need to, the showcase needs to be there for all types of music for sure. You know, we need that for everybody, for all the young people. Not the ones already playing, but the young people need to learn. But we don't have that in the city no more. They took all instruments out. So that's another thing I want to do is put the instruments back in these young people's hands and give them a chance. You don't have to be a musician, but at least know, you know, know some of the history and the artists that came out of Omaha, Nebraska. Because Alan Showcase is known around the world. First time I went to Germany, you got asked, how's Alan Showcase doing 24th and Lake Street? Some of the greatest jazz artists in the world played in this place. So, that's the only thing I'm concerned about is keeping that going on. That's, that's my main concern. You know. <coughs> yeah. Oh, it's my turn? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, my original question was, um, what did we want to see happen in this? In this? And um, my answer would be, um, I'd like to see a little bit more historical things of this of this community. I'm, I'm not seeing that here. If there's an opportunity for that, could we <coughs> develop that? Uh, you mean architectural? Uh, and or any opportunities that we could see more of a historical presence of the culture in this current area right now, that would be great. Okay. I mean, whether that be architect or whether that be um, interior design mm -hmm. or whatever, uh, I'm just saying there's an opportunity for that and I'd like to see that. Okay. And I would, I would say that it, it, <coughs> that's where we have several uh, public spaces and that kind of thing can happen in those public spaces, mm -hmm. and even in some areas of the lower level of the of the whole thing, whether it be art or or whatever. But really, to talk about the history and the culture of this of this community, and I can tell you right now, that's something we be all for, and would want to make sure it's incorporated in some way. Man, Michael, I don't know if it's you or Bridgie or maybe Bridgie or both, but if you got you know early you got. Paul, we got to find out how the, those artists stay engaged in the development process and because that, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of music and history and culture coming together around the music scene. Yeah, and if there's um, a way to, or if you're sorry. already doing that, I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, we have. So we've okay. been basically gathering and a lot of you signed in when you got here. So we've been accumulating all of the contact information for everyone who's come to these meetings. Um, there's also a public survey that's been circulating online where people can give feedback. But we've made an effort to keep everyone that's on that mailing list in the loop every step of the process. So notes from this meeting, those have right. gone out, the survey is still live, so there's lots of opportunities opportunities for people to stay engaged. And I would say a lot of the artists that had come through that meeting have now been coming to the union, and so we're seeing them in the hallway, they're, they're here with us, and so we're doing our best to keep everybody in the loop. Yeah. And let's just keep in mind, there's no one thing that's gonna solve all these problems, okay? <laughs> we, we, we need a number of activities going on in this community, you know, in order to solve these problems, so. Let's don't look, take one thing and say, well, it ain't solving that problem. Well, it's not maybe going to solve all the problems. But is, is this solving a problem? Is this at least they're making a not solving the problem, but at least having impact, a positive impact on the problem? And that's what we're trying to do. We like the idea you have kind of an old market kind of atmosphere as far as you put these type of studios in and you bring people in and then other people will come and you'll have a variety of venues going on at the same time. You have to do something to bring life back to a dead area. And, you know, like I said, uh, my, my, my own son, I, I would like to see them go tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we would do it. But all the things that everybody been, were talking about, the, the culture, the training, the teaching, the, you know, some of the, the, some of that stuff you guys have nothing to do with that has to do with us you know our involvement our our, our 
doing business with each other and you know all pulling our money together and trying to help each other. You guys come up with the facilities to, to do it, but it's up to us to make it work. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And, so, and I think it will work. I think once we get some uh, life back in the area, so any, any, any city I've ever lived in where, where it was dead, uh, artists are the first ones to come back in and revitalize the area. And um, so I like, I like the fact that I'm, I'm an artist, me, I know a lot of artists. I like the fact that that can be where some life begins. I can meet my neighbors, I can start a business in the, in the area. And some of this economic uh, development that we need in the area can come from people living in the area and working and, and engaging. So um, yeah, to me, you know, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to uh, let, let you know about how I feel about what we're seeing because I understand that you guys are here to provide an idea of the architecture, not you're not here to revitalize our culture. We're, we're going to do that on our own. Um, as long as the space is comfortable and spacious and, and what we need and affordable enough for us to come back to this area and do that, I think that this, it'll be a success. Um, so, yes, I, I like the ideas. I like the feel. Um, of course, there, there are some notes. We'll have notes on, on a, a few little things that might, might be different, might change or be different. Um, I really like the idea of the music, uh, uh, you know, having more spaces where there's um, uh, soundproofing so that Musicians can go well into the night doing what they do without waking people up. That's, that's kind of my only concern with the buildings, because I, I do believe people like Curly are going to be there teaching kids well into the, well into the days and nights. And um, if I'm living there, sleeping there, I don't want to hear his mouth. <laughs> not yelling at kids, no, I'm just playing. It, 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 definitely the soundproofing is my biggest concern and, um, and the affordability for the artist. One last thing, I guarantee you, if you go to the Benson, Meeting when they were renovating that area, the Dundee, we get some of the same type yeah. of complaints yeah. that we yeah. hear. And that's why we have these meetings. We want to hear. So I applaud you guys for doing what you're doing. And Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I just want to say one last thing as far as the events that I give. I, I do want to say that I do respect this process over a lot of other processes that have gone on in this community as far as keeping people informed. Because, um, I've been in situations where we have been informed and then I've been in this process and I really, really appreciate this process a lot because we've been informed from the very beginning and instead of having to come at this process on the back end, which is, that's happened a lot to us. So I really appreciate this process because I was one of those artists that moved away and I moved away for 20 years. And then, and I live, my parents live two blocks from here. And my, my mother still lives over there. And she's almost 80 years old, moved over there when she was 17. So it's like, you know, you have these people that live in the, live in the area, and move away, and they come back to the area. I moved away because I felt like I had a ceiling on my life. You know what I'm saying? I'm on all of my artists. I'm not only a visual artist. I've been singing. I sing with Richard Love. I sing, I sing with everybody. I do talking where I do all that stuff. But you don't have anywhere to go with it in this area. But when you come back and you see that people are trying to help you develop something and, and have us and have an outlet for what it is that you do, then you you want to come in here and help and do whatever you can to work in your community, to work for your community. And that's what I'm here to do. And I love this process and I'm, and I really appreciate how this process has helped us, you know, move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Just wanted again publicly Michael and Brigitte want to recognize you all for Keep pushing this thing forward. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for your time and feedback. Thank you.